the July 1993 issue, Popular Mechanics explored the U.S. Navy's new stealth creation, the Sea Shadow. The one-off research vessel resembled an F-117 Nighthawk on water, and its mission was similar, create an invisible ship by reducing its signature. The Sea Shadow would never officially join the fleet, but according to the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, designers applied lessons learned from the Sea Shadow for the Navy's new Zumwalt class destroyers. If on a certain night the moon were fall off the California coast, and you could somehow infiltrate the encircling picket line of military vessels to get within a few hundred yards of the right spot, you might see with your naked eye what you could see no other way. Disgorged from a hulking, barge-like mothership, a thin, prismatic shadow glides silently out onto the shining water like a splinter of obsidian. It is a ship of some kind, but there is something baffling about its shape. As it slowly turns to head for open water, its faceted surface presents the silhouette of a different object with every few degrees of rotation. One moment, it is a long, sloping trapezoid, then it foreshortens into a jumbled gemstone, then it resolves into a truncated letter A standing upright on the water. If you happened to have with you a battery of sonar, radar, and infrared sensors, they would have told you that what you were seeing wasn't there at all. Until Friday, April 9th, of this year, the US Navy would have told you the same thing. The vessel is the Sea Shadow, America's only known attempt to disappear as effectively on water as the F-117 stealth fighter can disappear in air. Construction took place in total secrecy nearly a decade ago at the Lockheed Missiles and Space Co.'s closely guarded Redwood City, California, facility. As one of the Defense Department's black programs, the whole $200 million undertaking officially did not exist. That changed this spring with the terse, page-long memorandum issued from the Pentagon. The need to conduct testing in daylight, it said, had forced disclosure of the program. Beyond that, the Navy kept a lid on the details. Except for a single media availability at 8 a.m. on Easter morning, reporters' questions met with brief answers from a script that public affairs officers were forbidden to stray from. Among the sparse facts made available were these, length. 160 feet, width, 70 feet, draft, 14 feet, displacement, 560 tons. The ship's purpose, according to the memo, was to explore the application of a variety of advanced technologies to surface ships. These technologies involve ship control, structures, automation, seakeeping and signature control. Signature control is another way of saying stealth. One look at the ship confirms that escaping detection was the dominant design concern. It has been shaped according to the same principles that led to the F-117, another Lockheed product. If you put wings on it and cut off the pontoons, you could probably fly it, joked Stan Zimmerman, a veteran Pentagon watcher and editor of the newsletter Navy News and Undersea Technology. So why did the Navy decide to build a stealth ship? How did they do it? And what will they do with the capabilities thus gained? Part of the Navy's motivation can be read in the grisly headlines that have followed the sea skirmishes of the past decade. The radar-guided, sea-skimming missile, most notoriously the French Exocet, has shown itself to be a deadly equalizer, giving the small navies of the world a way to draw blood from much larger, better equipped forces. Launched from a small patrol boat, helicopter or attack plane, these missiles close in on a target at near supersonic speeds, while presenting a radar cross-section the size of a seabird. They fly so low that they're less than a minute from impact by the time they pop over the horizon and into view of even the most powerful radars. Under these circumstances, currently available countermeasures, chaff decoys, and defensive gun and missile systems, are far from foolproof. Moreover, with a few hundred pounds of high explosive aboard, Sea skimming missiles pack a tremendous bang for their relatively few bucks. Although, as was the case with the US frigate Stark, heroic damage control measures may prevent a ship from actually sinking, that's about the best that can be hoped for. If a ship gets hit by a cruise missile, I think it's fair to say that their fighting for the day is over, says US Navy Captain John McGilvery, 
who recently researched stealth ship technology at the Naval War College. He estimates that there are more than 15,000 sea skimming missiles of one type or another in the hands of more than 50 navies around the world. Little wonder, then, that there are times when a ship's commander would like nothing better than simply to disappear. On November 4, 1982, an astute reader of the San Francisco papers might have been puzzled by a brief item on the impending departure of a tremendous floating dry dock from the Todd shipyard there. Known as the Hughes Mining Barge, the 4,700-ton vessel was originally built for a secret CIA project in the early 70s, and had been in mothballs for years. The CIA project, it has since come out, was an attempt to recover a Soviet nuclear sub that sank off the coast of Hawaii in 1968. This time, about all a Navy spokesman would say was, I can assure you it is not going to be used to go after a submarine. Inside the barge's 18-foot-long, 70-foot-high enclosure covered by an arched roof, where work can be conducted out of sight. By flooding ballast tanks, operators can sink the interior floor beneath the level of the surrounding seawater and float vessels in and out. The barge left Todd in the summer of 1983 and arrived at Lockheed Missile and Space in Redwood City shortly afterward. Hardly anyone knew why until this spring. According to the sketchy history released by the Navy, construction of the Sea Shadow took place inside the barge, apparently between 1983 and 85. Night tests were conducted in 1985 and 86, with the barge keeping the ship under cover for repairs and replenishment during daylight. The tests were suspended in 1986 and not resumed until this spring when the ship was unveiled. Although few specifics have been given on the reasoning behind the Sea Shadow's design, its stealthy shape and unusual twin hull configuration give clues to the intentions and past experiences of those who built it. Creating useful shapes with very small radar cross-sections is still a black art, but such shapes do have recognizable trademarks. Sea Shadow appears to be a product of first-generation stealth technology, which would explain its resemblance to the F-117. The shapes of both bear the imprint of a computer program called Echo I. Developed by Lockheed in the mid-1970s, this program was key to the company's success in winning the F-117 contract. Echo I was a breakthrough because it permitted designers to predict the radar cross-section of a shape before building it. The program limited options. However, because it could only analyze shapes made up of a finite number of two-dimensional panels. This accounts for the faceted appearance of early stealth designs. Since then, more powerful computers and software have made it possible to create more complex stealth designs like the B-2 stealth bomber. But stealth ships have tended to stick with the older approach. According to naval architect Harold Armstrong of Doughty Signature Management, an English maker of radar absorbing materials, it's mostly a matter of cost. Welding together flat plates is much easier than anything which is curved, he points out. Of course, stealth at sea requires much more than just reducing a ship's radar cross section. Sonar and infrared sensors can be equally threatening. And even if the ship itself could be made completely undetectable, its wake might still give it away. Modern radars can spot the waves kicked up by small speed boats, and the Navy has long worried that Russia might be working on satellite-borne wake sensors that could watch vast expanses of ocean. The Sea Shadow addresses all of these concerns with a single neat design stroke. The two thin struts that support its main hull stand on a pair of submerged, torpedo-like pontoons in what's known as a small waterplane area twin hull swath, configuration. Swath designs have long been known for exceptional stability in heavy seas, but in the case of the Sea Shadow, there are important additional advantages. First, with only the knife-like struts slicing the water's surface, the wake is reduced to almost nothing. Secondly, the noisier components of the propulsion system can be placed high above the water, when they're difficult to hear with passive sonar. The Navy says Sea Shadow's propulsion is diesel-electric, so the probable layout is one electric motor in each pontoon, powered by one or more diesel generators up above. Photos show exhaust venting between the swath hulls struts, 
where the heat would be masked from infrared sensor apostrophe s. Swath also appears to help in evading radar because it provides a wide base of support, from which the ship's sides can slope inward. Normally, a ship's sides are nearly vertical, meeting the water at close to 90 degrees. This produces a bright radar echo called a broadside flash, which is easy to home in on. Unfortunately, all this capability has a price. A look at the Navy's Togo's 19 Swath surveillance ships, which are said to incorporate lessons from the Sea Shadow, illustrates the trade-offs. Built to tow sub-hunting sonar arrays at high latitudes, where punishing seas damage equipment and wear out crews aboard conventional ships, the 3,397 long ton Togo's 19S are the largest U.S. made Swath vessels. According to Joseph McMahon, a naval architect at McDermott International where the vessels are built, the Swath configuration is well suited to the Togo's 19 mission, but suffers weight carrying and calm water speed limitations that would be a problem in other roles. Looking at pictures of the sea shadow, McMahon commented particularly on the inward slant, or dihedral, of the hull struts. This would damp out heaving motions in heavy seas by creating vertical drag, it also requires a nightmarishly complex structure. It's outstanding hydrodynamically. It's awful for the builder, says McMahon. So in the sea shadow the Navy has a ship that's stealthy, but difficult to build, capable of only 13 knots, and unable to carry a heavy weapons load. It's fair to ask, then, what do they want with it? At the very least, they want information. According to what's been released, Sea Shadow is strictly a one-off research tool. It's credited, for instance, with insights that helped reduce the radar cross-section of the Arleigh Burke-class destroyers. But, like several other new warship designs under construction around the world, the Arleigh Burke is better described as low observable than as completely stealthy. Arleigh Burke's builders made the ship hard enough to track that its other countermeasures are more effective, but couldn't make the performance compromises needed to make it disappear from radar. That brings us to the question of whether there is a role for a ship that, like Sea Shadow or the F-117, puts stealth above almost everything else. Maybe there is. Although critics of the idea point out that with nuclear submarines the Navy can already operate undetected at sea, a stealth ship would have at least two key advantages. One, it could be used for air defense of convoys, which subs presently cannot. Two, it could operate in a number of areas some of them strategically important, where the water is too shallow for subs to get close to shore. The bottom line is that, given how little we knew of the sea shadow until the moment of its unveiling, there's no telling what other invisible ships the Navy may have lurking at sea.